Hello, Mike here, and in this video we're going to talk about Claude 3.7 Sonnet, which as of recording released just a few hours ago. Here's the blog post from Anthropic. Uh, it also talks about Claude Code, which I'm not going to talk about in this video. That'll have to wait for another time. So let's talk about Claude 3.7 Sonnet. As we see from this post, it is Anthropic's most intelligent model to date, and the first hybrid reasoning model on the market. What does that even mean? Well, that's what we're going to look at in this video, and we're going to have some code where we actually see this in action. If we scroll down here just a little bit more, um, we do see some of the benchmarks. So there's software engineering, there's agentic tool use, and here is the table which you expect to see with any launch like this, where the numbers keep getting bigger. But let's dig in a little more into this reasoning and thinking that the model does. If we go to the AWS News blog, then we have a blog post here, and I'll put a link to all of this stuff in the description beneath this video. Um, this talks about um, this hybrid reasoning in a bit more detail. And if we scroll down, we get to um, an example of how you can use it in the console and how you can enable it. But still, what is it? Well, it's the ability to be able to specify how deeply we want the model to think and to reason through the prompt that we give it. So if we have something super simple, then it doesn't necessarily need to do any reasoning at all. And we can just use it as we would have used Claude 3.5 Sonnet. But if we want it to think deeply, rather than necessarily having to specify that in the prompt, then we can hand that responsibility over to the model, we can ask it specifically to think, and we can give it space to think. Let me show you in just a second. If we come here to the Amazon Bedrock console page, if we want to enable access to this model so that we can actually start coding with it, I scroll down to the bottom of the left-hand side, go to Model Access, and scroll down, and you'll see it right there, Claude 3.7 Sonnet. I'm in US West 2, so just check which region you want to run this in and which region it's currently supported. US West 2, Oregon is supported. Um, if you don't have it currently enabled, then go to Modify Model Access and click on that and enable yourself access to 3.7 Sonnet. Also, note here that it is cross-region inference. So this model has cross-region inference only, and that means that we will have to modify slightly the model ID in order to be able to get access to it. And we'll look at that in more detail in a second. If I scroll to the top on the left-hand side and go to Model Catalog, I can click here on Anthropic, and of course, there's Model 3.7 Sonnet. I get to read all about it, what it's good at, all that kind of stuff, and we also get to see the model ID that we do have to change just slightly if we want to use it in our own code. All right, let's jump into some code and see how we can make this work. And so here I have my Jupyter Notebook. So yes, I'm going to be doing this in Python, and I'm going to be using Boto3. Now, if you want to run this code today, then you do need to make sure that you've upgraded your SDK. So I'm using Boto3. I need to have updated Boto3. I have done so already by running pip install upgrade Boto3. And if I just list out the version that I'm currently running, I am running version 1.37. So you need to have a version of the Boto3 SDK SDK, which is at least 1.37, in order for this code to work properly. OK, let's get ourselves started by using the Converse API to call Claude 3.7 Sonnet just regularly, just normally, without any deep reasoning or thinking for the moment. Um, so I'm going to import um, Boto3, um, also JSON because it makes it useful later on. Um, and I'm going to set up my client object. So this is my Bedrock Runtime client object in US West 2. That allows me to connect to resources in that region and work with Bedrock. So I'm going to run that. Um, and this is where I'm going to set my model ID. So my model ID is exactly what we just saw in the console just a moment ago in the documentation, but we do have to put US dot at the beginning because this is a cross-region endpoint. OK, so with that set, let's just make sure I run that cell. Um, let's go and set ourselves up a super, super simple system message. This almost isn't worth having as a system message. This is really just a placeholder where you could put your own if that's what you want to do. Um, and then let's get ourselves set up with a user message that we're going to send to Converse API. So my role is user, and my content is write a poem that will make me fall in love. Um, so let's press run on that. 
Okay, and now we get to the Converse API part. And if you're familiar with the Converse API, you'll notice that there's no change because I'm just using the Converse API here to make a regular inference on Claude 3.7 Sonnet. So I pass in the model ID, um, the messages, as in the message about me wanting a poem, uh, my system message, and some basic inference configuration here. Pass that to Converse. Let's click Run on that, um, and it will go and do that. Now, this isn't the streaming output. There's a streaming version of this as well. If you want that, um, let's go and have a look at the output that we just got. So um, I'm zoomed in a little bit here so you can see. But uh, well, there's the output. This is the part that I think I care most about. And here's my role, assistant, the output, content. Here is my poem in text. So we just did a regular Converse API call to Claude 3.7 Sonnet. What do we do if we want to get it to reason more deeply and think more deeply about, in this case, the poem that I want it to write? Um, let's scroll down a bit. This is how we do that. So inside of the Converse API, we have additional model request fields. And that's what we're taking advantage of here. So we ask for thinking. We want to enable that. And then we have budget tokens. Now, these budget tokens, which is an anthropic term that they've used, is how many tokens do we want to give the thinking process um, so that it can think through and reason through what it wants before generating the output. So we still have max tokens set ridiculously high at the moment, I must admit. But we still have max tokens set um, for the general inference, for the output that we want. But how many do we want to specify for the budget for thinking? The other things we must note here is that temperature must be set to 1, and we can't use top p. So if you do have these set to other values because of previous code that you've got, you will need to modify that if you're going to be using this thinking process. So let's press Run on that. Um, and it's going to do a bunch more here, right? It's going to like, generate a bunch more tokens. Let's dump that out to JSON so we can see it. And here is what the output now looks like. Let me just expand that a little bit, scroll back up. Here is what the output looks like. So we still have role assistant, and we still have the text of our poem. But we also have this reasoning content with this reasoning text and the text in here which explains the thinking that went behind the output. And I really like this. So in the past, whenever I've prompted um, an anthropic model or any other model, actually, um, to do some thinking, I've asked it to do thinking and put it between thinking tags. Um, and so then I can ignore that part in the final generation and just maybe take the output from output tags and just take that. And there's string passing that I have to do in this kind of stuff. But I don't have to do that here. I just get my poem out, and I get my thinking up here. If I don't care about the thinking, I can just ignore it, and I can just take my output, which is my deeply reasoned and thought through poem in this particular case. We're going to get to another example in a minute. Um, so let's scroll down here. And I'm just going to unpack the output. right? So rather than just using that JSON structure, um, let's have a look at it printed out a little nicer. So I'm just going to print that out. And so here's the reasoning that it went through. So I'm being asked to write a poem that will make someone fall in love. Um, this is a creative writing request. and. On it goes, with all of its reasoning and thinking about how it can write the better poem. And there's the poem. I'm not going to read it for now. Generate your own and have a look at your own. Let's have a look at another use case here, where we're being a little bit more um, specific about the need to reason. Um, so here, I've got a prompt, which is, I placed a cup on the table and put a sugar cube in the cup. You may have heard this kind of thing before. I've seen other people do this kind of test. So I, let's go through that again. I placed a cup on the table. I put a sugar cube inside the cup. I turned the cup upside down. What is the sugar cube sitting on? OK, so imagine you've done that. You can think where that sugar cube would be sitting. It would basically be sitting on the table somewhere, either under the cup or maybe it's skidded away somewhere else. Um, let's go ahead and run this. So I'm going to define that message. And initially, let's go and call this without our additional reasoning, reasoning here. Um, and let's give it a little bit of 0 0.7 in terms of temperature. In this cell, I've also got all of the output code built into this. So all I need to do is run this. And let's take a look at the output. When you turn the cup upside down, the sugar cube would, would be sitting on the interior surface of the cup, which is now facing downward. Since the cup is inverted, 
Um, what was previously the opening of the cup is now against the table, and the bottom of the cup is now facing up the sugar cube, which was upside down in the cup, would remain inside and would be resting on the inner surface of the cup. And as you can see, it's got this wrong. Now, to be fair, if you run this a couple of times, you might find that it gets it right. The point is that models aren't great at reasoning through this kind of thing unless they're given the space to think deeply about it. And so let's do just that. So let's scroll back up and let's enable this and the ability to think. We'll give it the 2,000 tokens. We'll set this back to one because that's what we must have. And let's press run on this again. And now it'll think through this and hopefully we'll get a more reliably accurate answer each time. So let's think through this step by step. Um, initially, the cup is placed on the table and the sugar cube is placed in the cup. Then the cup is turned upside down. It's got a whole bunch of thinking there. Let's go skip to the end. Let's skip to what the response is. When you turn the cup upside down, the sugar cube would fall out of the cup and land on the table. So the sugar cube is sitting on the table, which of course is the right answer. So there you go. That's how to use uh, Claude 3.7 Sonnet with the reasoning capability through the Converse API on Amazon Bedrock. You get to specify if you want it to use that extra reasoning, you get to specify how much extra reasoning you want. What I really like about this is that the output is split between the thinking and the actual output. So you could actually now ask the model, just output the value I want, just output the poem, just output the number, and you don't have to do any kind of string manipulation to split that apart because it's now structured in the output. And so we can ignore the thinking if we don't need that and just go for the final answer. If you like this video, then please do give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like this, then subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions at all about Claude 3.7 Sonnet or anything else Amazon Bedrock, then please do drop a comment beneath this video. I hope you found this useful, and until the next time, I'll see you later.